Today on BRS TV, it's the last list of boring par charts. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which puts you to sleep each night with par charts. All jokes aside, we've had a lot of fun learning about what made the historical standards of halides with the Giesemann Spectra and T5s with the ATI Sun Power work so well, and then looking at other more relevant options with the Philips Coral Care, Kessel, Radions, the Diffusers, AI Primes, the Orphic Atlantic, and today, due to popular demand, we're going to look at the AP700. We'll continue to explore some new lighting options as they come out and circle back to some old ones, but we're going to take a quick break from that for a bit and bring you something brand new. I can't tell you what the grand plan is just yet, but right after the Black Friday sale, expect something that we've never done before. So this week is a Kessel AP700, and to some degree it kind of looks like two A360s, but in a lower profile format, it's really more than that. First we counted each LED cluster and it looks like each AP700 lens has 63 LEDs rather than the 43 with the 360. A single AP700 has 40 more LEDs than two 360s which are also wider spectrum. So with that said, diving right into it, we're going to look at coral health factors with providing adequate PAR, how the PAR is distributed, and spectrum. Our focus is always on those SPS and higher demand corals when evaluating PAR because almost any common reef tank lighting can provide the lower PAR required for LPS and lower light corals. That range for SPS that we're shooting for is 250 to 350 in as much of the tank as possible. That range coming from our episode called How Much PAR for SPS, which dives into that question from all angles. The Kessel website suggests a mounting height of 5 to 7 inches when trying to cover a 24 to 36 inch area, so we went ahead and tested at both heights. I also tuned it to the fourth blue setting on the color wheel, which is where many of us would run them on a tank, and starting at a mounting height of 5 inches off the water and a depth of 6 inches in the tank. The center part numbers are really off the chart with 733, the middle ring an average of 466, and the outer ring an average of 242. The light distribution predictably follows the shape of the light, and from right to left, across the center of the tank, the part numbers are pretty similar. But the fall off from front to back are pretty significant at this mounting height and depth. At a depth of 12 inches in the tank, the center is 460, the middle ring 411, and 290 on the outer edge, but the shape of the distribution of the light still falls off from front to back. This is again predictable because left to right in the cube, there's only two lights splitting the tank up, but front to back, there's only one in the center. At a depth of 18 inches, we're looking at 333 in the center, 338 in the middle ring, and 308 on the outer edge. The distribution of light is pretty even at this point. Overall, this isn't the best distribution of light we've seen, but I also don't think that we've measured at five inches off the surface of the water with anything else before. So let's move the light up two inches to the higher suggested mounting height of seven inches off the water and see what happens. At a depth of six inches, you can already see the effect of raising the light up a couple inches, and the average power in the center drops to 581, a much closer 412 in the middle ring, and rather than seeing 50s and 60s on the front edge, we're now seeing an average power of 260 on the outer ring of the tank, which is much better distribution at this shallow depth. At a depth of 12 inches in the tank, we're now looking at 351 in the center, 328 in the middle ring, and 292 on the outer edges. This is that ultra-even distribution of light that we're hoping to see. Similar effect at the bottom of the tank with 251 in the center, 292 in the middle ring with the light bouncing off the glass, and 289 in the outer edges, really flat, even coverage from two single domes of LEDs and integrated reflectors. Overall, this is a very high power light and right up there with other common models in this price range when they're running typical spectrum mixes that reefers would actually consider running or those suggested by the manufacturer. However, I don't think I agree with a 5 to 7 inch mounting height. I think I'd personally go with something like 7 to 9 inches in a common 2 foot deep and wide tank like this one. Just a couple inches makes a huge difference in the distribution of light with these single wide angle spherical lenses. Moving on to the 4 foot 120, this is another one of those lights that claims to be able to illuminate an entire 4 foot tank with a single light. So we're going to take a look at that as well as what it looks like when we do two side by side. Starting with a single light mounted in the middle of a 15 to 18 inch suggested mounting height at 16.5 inches above the water. At a depth of 6 inches, we're looking at an average par of 199, middle ring of 157, and the edges 115, so distribution is solid, but the overall par is a bit lower than most SPS owners would probably like. Moving to a depth of 12 inches in the tank, we're looking at 141 in the center, 131 in the middle ring, and 137 in the outer ring, which is impressively even distribution. Down at the bottom and 18 inches deep in the tank, similar solid distribution with 107, 133, and 130 average par respectively. 
Overall, I'd call this a pretty awesome solution for a medium par tank like LPS, polyps, or softy system, but I don't think I'd try and put many SPS corals in it other than right in the center and up pretty high. So let's look at two mounted side by side and seven inches off the surface of the water. At a depth of six inches, we're looking at 663 in the center, 444 in the middle ring, and 207 on the outer edges, which is fairly decent distribution at a shallow depth using LED modules like these. At a depth of 12 inches, 452, 382, and 296 respectively, which are all some pretty high readings. And at a depth of 18 inches in the tank, 335 in the center, 327 in the middle ring, and 315 in the outer ring. Mostly three to four hundreds at the bottom of the tank, and this is what I would consider a very bright light. In fact, I think almost everyone would certainly raise these lights to nine or ten inches off the water to get that ultra flat even distribution with slightly lower par. So there's no question these lights are producing enough par when used correctly. So what about spectrum? The AP700 gives you basically ten settings for spectrum, as well as individual control over green and red. Looking at the fourth blue setting, which we would likely use here, this is a fairly wide spectrum light and does include the 380 near UV spike which most reefers find desirable. Many reefers including myself and the BRS 160 have been successful using the spectrum offering found in the AP700. Outside of what available LEDs are included, we also look at how well the light actually blends that spectrum in two different environments. The first being the easiest, which is how well does the lens blend all of the individual LEDs into a single cohesive spectrum in air, with the light mounted 19 inches over the sensor and taken at 9 points over a 2 foot grid. I have to tell you it performs almost perfectly with only the tiniest of shifts at all 9 points. I also have to say that I'm not surprised because I already know that putting all of the LEDs under a single lens is one of the best ways to get all the individual LEDs to blend cohesively and behave like a single light source. Now look at the much harder test with how the light reacts with the water surface in our dynamic test, where we test underwater with water movement. I say this is much harder because with a grid of LEDs in the individual lenses, the surface ripples catch each individual spectrum and reflect it around the tank rather than blend them together. As you can see with the AP700, the approach of putting all the LEDs under a single lens works really well at blending all the spectrums together. In fact, I'll go ahead and say that all the lights available for sale in the US that we've tested, the Castles are easily the best performers at taking all those individual LEDs and creating a single cohesive light source that both measures that way and to the eye, you don't see the individual colors shooting around the tank or flashing on the back walls of your tank. So looking at par intensity, par distribution, and spectrum, there's no doubt this light can grow corals and on many fronts a top performer. Moving on to visual appeal and how the light makes the corals and tank look with color pop, contrast, and sense of depth, shimmer, dimming, lunar lights, and physical appeal to light itself because right after coral health, I think the main thing here is we want the corals and tank to look awesome. That's kind of the whole purpose of building and maintaining a reef tank in our home. In relation to color pop, I don't think anyone will be disappointed with how this light will make your corals look. The fairly wide spectrum and nine set points ranging from very white all the way to the deepest blue will most certainly provide you with the color range that you're looking for with almost no effort. Since the light is still coming from two single points of light, you're still getting that very high contrast image with the darker and lighter areas of the tank, which creates a visually interesting image. As to shimmer, I think that's what Kessels are known for the most. Again, almost completely related to the single points of light they produce with a reasonable amount of shimmer for LEDs rather than the 100 plus LEDs and 100 lenses all creating their own shimmer lines, which often turns into more of a TV static effect than anything. You also won't notice individual colors shooting around the tank or that disco ball effect. You can also adjust the shimmer by raising or lowering the lights to some degree, as well as change the surface tension by changing the flow. The LEDs do dim very easily using their apps. You can create dust to dawn effects without any issues. The interface is simple and easy to use. There is a lunar phase as well. I will say the default settings are a bit bright for my taste, so you might want to turn them down. Lastly, physical appeal the light itself over the tank. It's very sharp looking, low profile and unobtrusive in the room, which to me adds the overall look of the tank rather than taking away. And the last component with available features, mounting options, on and off board of controllability, intuitive modes, controller compatibility, build quality and quiet operation, starting with mounting options. You can use the hanging kit, but there's also A-series mounting arms which are available, which clamp onto the side of the tank and hide the power cord. And there's also mounting brackets for attaching the AP700 easily and securely inside a low-profile hood. 
So all the mounting options are easy and attractive. There are some limited onboard controls and buttons, but I don't think most reefers will use them. Most of the controls are going to be done via the iOS, Apple, or Android apps. The apps are simple to use and straightforward, and I think Kessel is the author of intuitive modes that help you be successful using the light with Kessel's logic. The Kessel logic means they start with a blue spectrum peak that will grow corals on its own, but likely too blue for your personal visual appeal, and then provide steps which add in additional spectrum between green, yellow, and red to make the tank visually appealing meaning they've done the most important components of spectrum work for you rather than leaving you to your own devices with a bunch of slider bars. Sadly, there's no controller compatibility with Apex or even their own spectral controller. Honestly, I really wish they had provided the ability to do either because I would personally much rather use these interfaces, particularly with multiple lights chained together. I will say after using them for two years, the way the master-slave relationship works, particularly during the power outages, leaves some room for improvement and can be frustrating, allowing you to use existing controllers like their own spectral controller or even better, the Apex would have been a really easy way to get around all this. As always, if this is something that you want, say it in the comments or in our Reef to Reef thread, or even better, send them an email or Facebook post so that they know what you want. In relation to build quality, they use some of the best drivers out there with the mean wells, custom cord connections, proper heat sink, and is obviously built by a company who not only knows what they're doing, but also cares. The actively cooled heat sink and fans also run very silent. I don't think anyone could hear them in normal instances. As always, we're giving one of these bad boys away this week, so click that link that just showed up, or head on over to our site, click on the Sales and Deals tab, then free stuff to sign up. If you want to share your experience or have additional questions, head on over to our Reef to Reef thread with the link down below. We'll see you next week with another episode of BRS TV.